Hey everybody, in this video we are going to take care of an advanced concept in React Redux Saga with Hooks. More specifically, event channels. Okay, let me set up a scenario here. So you want to trigger a Saga in your React Redux Saga implementation and you want when that Saga is triggered to create a event listener, well, a, a socket connection to a server. And how do you do that? And get the information from the socket to your Saga because the information that comes from your socket is coming whenever the Saga can create the socket, but the information that the socket receives is on a different part of the code. So you want that message from your socket. You want that information to be available in your saga. How do you do that? You can use this with, I don't know, a set timeout. You don't know when the seconds are going to pass because you don't know how the set timeout is set. You can use it with sockets. You can use it with event listeners. For example, uh, if you're in an iframe and you're waiting for a message from your parent or you're the parent and you're waiting for a message from the iframe. Anyway, you have an asynchronous information event sort of thing, a socket connection that you want to grab, get that information and make it available inside of your saga. That's the challenge. How do you do that? Well, in a previous video, I showed you how you can install React Redux with hooks and I, show you how, I showed you how you could install React Redux with saga hooks. In this video, I'm going to uh, show you how you're going to use the saga event channels effect. Okay, so I have here a um, browser open, but I also have this uh, server, which don't judge too much because I'm not disposing of the um, socket connections. I'm not handling a lot of things. I'm just creating the server and uh, sending information from it. Now, this is running on my uh, PC, my desktop over here. And I'm connecting to it. As you can see, the uh, browser is supposed to connect to an IP, right? Okay. So, if I go to the server, I'm going to see here that I have um, when the socket receives a connection, it shows a console log of a user connected. So, I'm going to see in the console user is connected. And then I'm going to clear the interval that I'm going to create up here because the interval is uh, globally available up here. So it's a variable that will receive the interval ID so that I may clear it on each new connection. This is just for demonstration purposes. Basically, I am uh, once I am connected, I get this socket and inside of a set interval uh, method here, I output to the console uh, the current second on my clock and I also emit on a second message string, the current second on my clock. So basically, if I connect to this socket server, once it's started, I'm gonna start it here with, um, well, I'm gonna start it with npx node mon server.js. And right now it's listening. I can test it with Postman, 
but with Postman uh, Canary, Canary. But I'm just going to go to my app and show you my app and what it does. So, in the saga, in the only saga I uh, showed in the previous React Redux Saga Hooks tutorial, which is available in the description as a link, by the way, amongst the blog post for this uh, code, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. You're gonna see here that we have the Saga, we have the, the data watcher for the Saga, run our action is the Saga, and what happens in the Saga is a socket is created for that server address. If you remember the server address, it's, well, it's the IP of the desktop computer I have here close, and the port is 3001. So I'm supposed to connect to 3001 and I am going to make a call to a function and send it the socket. Now, what is this function? The receive message function, it's just a function that gets the socket and well, when uh, it's disconnected, it just connects but that's not what we are looking for. The event channel over here, it starts here, it ends here. Let me see if I can format the code, yes. The event channel over here is the whole thing. So this uh, receive message that's being called here with yield is going to return an event channel which has a parameter of a function with a parameter called emitter well you can call it wherever you want i call it emitter and this parameter is actually a function now this event channel is going to contain my socket on seconds if you remember the seconds over here in the server is sending every three seconds the current second on the clock right so when the server sends the data, this socket is going to retrieve that data in this message. The thing is, how do I get this message back into my saga? Well, the emitter will have the parameter that message. So basically, I'm inside receive message, which I called, let me, let me just close here. So receive message, I called down here, passing it the socket, and the socket is inside of an event channel effect. It's being declared, so it's listening for the seconds um, messages. And the message is being passed to the parameter of the event channel function. So the emitter is getting this message and it's, it's a parameter of the event channel, so it's being returned to receive message. So when we have here a variable chan, which stands for channel, uh, when this call returns the receive message, it's going to re uh, return inside of this chan. Now this chan is going to uh, be set as a parameter of take. Now take just blocks the um, code blocks the saga until there's something in uh, this parameter, until this parameter is returned. So basically when the socket retrieves a message, take will stop this current saga until Chan has a value and value will be the value of uh, whatever Chan is returning. So take is going to process the, the logic of the functionality of the Saga function. Well, it's going to stop the execution of the code until Chan is returned, until event channel uh, returns the emitter with a message, basically. So value is just going to be put in the reducers under set data as a payload value. So basically we're going to have a reducer with the current second 
whenever a message is returned. However, you see here there's a while true, which is an infinite loop and a try. Hmm, what's this? Well, basically, if the while true is running, the code on this stake stopped. So until Chan is returned, the code is not going to go on. So the while true is blocked. The while is blocked. So basically, we have the value when it's being sent and we're setting it inside of the reducer set data. If we didn't have this while, we would just get the first message from the socket and then that's it. The execution of the saga, run our action, would stop. Since we have this while, it's going forever, basically listening for the connection uh, of the socket. So if you want to continuously listen, you go inside of a while true, it's not a problem because you have a yield take of your channel response here. But don't take my word for it. Let's try and run things. So what I'm going to do is npm start and go back into my browser. Uh, close the window that just appeared. Refresh this. And you will see that, well, I kind of removed a few things from the previous tutorial and we just have a pull async data button, which will trigger the saga. Previously, it was making an async request and pulling in some data, showing the data on the screen. Right now, it is actually uh, opening up an event channel, which is starting a to listen on the seconds uh, label, the seconds uh, uh, socket messages and putting that message inside of the saga. So basically event channel is giving us a way by containing whatever it is that we are receiving messages from and giving us the emitter to pass the value of the message to our saga back by using the take from that uh, event channel return and the value of this uh, resulting take is going to be our value from the emitter. Uh, event channel also has a return of an anonymous function where you can dispose whenever the event channel closes. So, I just started this. Basically, when I press the button, you're going to see that a number shows up here. And that number is actually the number that's showing here. The user connected and it's 5, 8, 11, 14, go back here, 14, 17, go back here. It's at 20, go back here, 20. So basically, whatever the server is sending, I am every three seconds I am catching in the well the socket and sending it with the event channel saga which again it's a redux saga effect I am sending it to the take here and it's going listening forever for any new messages and that is basically it there's going to be a link in the description with all of this code in a blog post available for you to just copy paste and test out. That's basically it for this video. Uh, I hope you like event channel in Saga and you find them useful. It's a very advanced concept. All of the tutorials with React Redux hooks, React Redux Saga is in the description down below. And also the blog post showing all of the code from this tutorial. So you can study it more closely and you don't have to scroll through the video. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I am Chip. And as always, I'll see you next time.